Hello, I'm Eliana Lima, and today I'll be going over a brief introduction to RAD, or Rules for Archival Description. RAD is a Canadian content standard which provides descriptive guidance in the creation of archival finding aids. It was based roughly on the AACR2R framework, which was adjusted and embellished to align with archival principles. Currently, RAD is available for free as a nearly 700-page PDF, but individual chapters can also be downloaded separately. Most chapters either focus on describing a certain resource type or a specific level of description. To understand RAD, it's helpful to go over some essential terms. Two of the most important concepts are FOND and RESPETE FOND. Description in RAD follows a top-down approach with the broadest level, or FOND, being described first. A FOND is a group of objects that all originate from the same person or organization and are created or accumulated organically. One easy way to understand FOND is to compare them with a collection. As RAD explains, collections lack organic unity and that the various objects are curated rather than naturally occurring from a single creator's day-to-day -day life. Respect de fond, a common concept in the archival community, also aligns with this distinction between collections and fond and that it dictates that records from different origins shouldn't be intermingled. Also important to this principle is that the original order of records or objects must be maintained for the sake of archival integrity. Let's take a short look at the history of RAD. It has its origins in 1990 when it was published by the Planning Committee on Descriptive Standards. The writing of RAD took three years and its chapters were divided amongst working groups that specialize in various resource types. In 1996, the Canadian Committee on Archival Description was established to oversee maintenance and revision of RAD, a position they hold to this day. In 2001, there was an attempt to consolidate archival description standards in North America into a single standard, but Canadian and American archivists felt their approaches didn't mesh and two separate standards were drafted. During this time, RAD 2 was created, but it was unpopular and dropped in favor of a simple revision to RAD. Finally, 2008 was the most significant event in the standards history as the current revised version was released that year. The 2008 edition included a statement of principles, greater flexibility, and a new chapter on describing discrete items. As stated previously, RAD was created as a national Canadian standard to be used in the creation of archival finding aids. In the foreword of RAD, the purpose and goals of the standard are outlined. The goals align with the goals of any metadata standard, enable uniform description, facilitate information exchange, and improve service to archive users. On the right, you'll find a screenshot of RAD's table of contents split into two parts. Part one focuses on the description, and part two details how to create headings and access points. Part two acts as a built-in controlled vocabulary with chapters on geographic names, people, and corporate bodies. Part one moves from general rules for description to rules for describing specific materials. Chapters with a narrower focus will frequently cite back to sections of the general rules to avoid redundancy. And all chapters provide guidance for all levels of description from font level to item level. One of the most important principles of RAD is that information provided at each level of description must be appropriate to that level. The description at the font level won't comprehensively go into detail about each individual item because it's meant to describe all objects in the font as a collective unit. A RAD compliant finding aid will contain three types of description in addition to the aforementioned levels of description. The provenance of the records, or as RAD calls it, the custodial history, focuses on a font history of ownership. In other words, who has and had control over the records at their various stages of existence. Biographical or administrative descriptive information refers to the origins of the records. When a FON was created via the day-to-day -day workings of an organization, this information is called administrative, but when it can be attributed to a single person or family, it's called biographical. 
Finally, similar to bibliographic description, a RAD finding aid will describe information about the content or scope of the records. Provenance and the content of records may be described at any level, but administrative or biographical information is typically only provided at the FON level. Similar to Dublin Core, RAD has basic, a basic set of elements. Unlike Dublin Core, these elements aren't optional, but required to achieve a minimal level of compliance. These five elements are title, dates, extent, administrative history or biographical sketch, and scope and content. There are also additional elements that are considered required, but may not be usable in all cases. Let's take a look at what the basic elements look like in a FON level record. This is an example of a FON level description from the University of Manitoba archives. You'll notice that it contains required elements from the basic and extended sets on the previous slide. From the top, we have title, which is typically the name of the creator plus the word font. Following that, we have a date range for all the records within the font. The extent which describes the physical size of the font, a biographical sketch, which gives background information on the creator, and finally the scope and content. which provides users with an idea of what to expect inside the font as far as resource types and subject matter goes. This particular record goes beyond the five basic elements to include custodial history, restrictions, and accruals. RAD is often presented in two different styles. On the University of Manitoba Archives website, we saw the formal style on the left, where the elements are clearly defined and separated by line breaks. There is also an informal shorthand way to write RAD, where you use periods and dashes to separate the elements. RAD doesn't prescribe which format to use, and examples of both are given throughout the guide. One of the reasons the RAD document is so long it's because it attempts to be a comprehensive one-stop shop for archivists, containing its own controlled vocabulary and recommended punctuation for each element. To the right, you can see an example of a typical punctuation section, as well as an excerpt from the chapter on geographic names. Rather than link to outside thesauri like other standards, RAD provides its own preferred terms whenever possible. The two main features that set RAD apart from its fellow archival metadata standards are its thoroughness and its Canadian roots. In 2016, a representative from the Archives Associate Association of Ontario compared RAD to the American Standard DACS and International Standard ISADG, saying, they focus on aggregate levels of description and leave archivists to look to external media-specific standards for item level description. Two things that make the standard distinctly Canadian are its attention to bilingual users, with examples alternating between French and English, and its dedication to the FON concept, which wasn't as popular in the States. Finally, RAD sets itself apart from bibliographic descriptive standards via its top-down approach and its focus on the provenance of records in addition to their contents. As with any standard, RAD is not without its downsides. One of the biggest barriers to implementation is its perceived impracticality and complexity. Most archives don't have the time or resources to describe their records at multiple levels, and some opt for only partial implementation. Another issue is that Canadian archivists report feeling boxed in by the standard. It doesn't map to other content standards and cannot be used on a global scale. Finally, users of RAD feel it's outdated in its material focus and the type of language it uses. 
it doesn't adequately address digital collections and the terms it uses are often geared towards advanced researchers damaging the accessibility of Canadian archives. Despite its challenges, RAD is still widely present in Canadian archives today thanks to its successful implementation in the 90s. In a 1999 survey, 71% of respondent Canadian Council archives members said that they were using RAD and in 2008, there were 55,000 RAD compliant FOND level descriptions in the National Database Archives Canada. It should be noted that, although RAD was widely accepted, many archives only partially followed the standard, stopping at the broader levels of description. It's possible that the standard will be revised again in the near future to a lighter, more friendly user guide. Thank you for watching.